Hello everyone. This is uh, Grandmaster R. B. Ramesh. Approaches training, and today, as usual, we are going to see some training games that is being played uh, by our participants. Uh, we have a uh, training games uh, played on two days among our participants, and we give some important, interesting training positions uh, to test themselves uh, in different kinds of positions. So this position, uh, which we are seeing on the screen. It happened between uh, Grandmaster Duda versus uh, Pratinanda. It was New Inches Rapid Preliminaries. Uh, played uh, just a uh, few months ago. Now, in this position, Prag is playing black. From the right from the opening of Vienna variation, he was in some kind of uh, difficulty. He had a very cramped position, a passive position, but Around this point, he got a very good counter play. And now the C pawn is kind of weak. It's under threat by both the queen and the rook. Uh, so is the weak pawn on D4. And also for both white and black, the pawns on A3 are not very active. And there is some pressure on the F1 pawn as well. And uh, black also has back rank weakness whereas white has already played g3, so that part is taken care of. Now it is black to play. Generally what we do, we will when we see a pawn under attack, we will try to defend it. But Prague played uh, very nicely. He went for peace activity. He wants to come rook to d5. For example, if he takes with this, now the rook is under attack, and we are also threatening knight e5, exploiting this spin. But you could also do the same directly, right? Exploiting this spin. So this pawn is indirectly taken care of, and black wants to go rook d5. And once he gets rook to d5, the pawn on d4 will be under pressure, and uh, also the threat of knight to e5 will be renewed. So here, Duda found a nice way. He wants to block the D file with knight to D6 and thereby reducing the pressure on the D4 pawn. So it makes perfect sense to play this move. And Prague continued with his usual idea, which is to triple on the D file and pressure, exert pressure on D4 pawn. So now there are multiple threads. One threat is to take on e5 followed by rook into d1. The other threat is to simply win the pawn with rook d4. So the only way to save both the pawns is to block the file and reduce the pressure. Now, this knight looks very strong and white is threatening rook b1, rook b7. Around this point, both the players were running short of time. It was rapid time control. And how should black get ready for this to meet this threat of rook b1 rook b7 and then uh, your son point will be very weak so here prague did the right thing he played f6 exploiting the hanging nature of the knight if he takes ef6 he will lose the knight so might had to act energetically more or less forced and as i had already mentioned ef6 will lose too lose the piece on d6. So now this is a serious threat. And when I was watching the game live, I was expecting this move. And for some reason, uh, Prague did not play it. Um, the point is now if you take, then knight e5 happens and black will win the game immediately. So the move we need to worry about is rook b7. The point is if you take queen d6, you get Queen of Swan, Queen G7 checkmate. So probably this is what uh, discouraged Prague from going into this variation. But if you look a little closely, instead of Queen D6, we can sacrifice the Queen by playing Rook into D6. And when he captures, now this pawn is also hanging, right? So it's better to capture with the other Rook. Now what are we threatening? Now we are going to simply take the pawn and then we will have two connected pass pawns, right? 
and we can even push D3, D2 all the way and cramping the white rook forever. So this would have given very good compensation for uh, us, for black. Now, for example, if he plays king g2, even ed4, and uh, most likely black is even better here. And at least he doesn't have any chance of losing the game. All the pawns are defended, all the pieces are safe. So this is what Prague should have done. But after rook b1, now Prague went for c5. Now, objectively, this move is not the best move, but it has a devilish trap. So white played knight d6 and rook b1 with the idea of rook b7, isn't it? So Prague understood uh, white wants to go rook b7. And c5 move is designed against knight b7. Sorry, rook b7. Now let's see what happened in the game. He played rook b7. And now Prague had a fantastic resource, which is knight e5. Now the point is, if d5, we take rook into d1 check. And if queen into d1, we simply take queen b7. This is the point. The queen and the knight are pinned. And black wins the exchange. So he cannot do queen d1. Now, if he plays king g2, now the point is, anyway, the rook is attacking the queen. And uh, this is also under attack. And if we move the queen, he may get like rook into g7 check. For example, let's say we try to defend the rook. Then... Uh, not sure uh, if rook g7 works. Maybe that is not required. But you can see that uh, white's attack with rook, knight, and the queen. How about queen h5? Looks very strong. Or maybe this works. Huh? Just this. So you can see this looks a little scary, but again, Prague has a nice tactic taking on d6. Now, if he takes ed6, queen d6, then we have too many pawns. And if he does this, we have rook into d7. And this also, black should be perfectly fine. And I was expecting he would go for this variation. Um, but he played queen d5. Now, before we go deep into the variation, we can see that after rook b7, black has this knight, b, knight e5 idea. So what Duda could have done is exploiting the c5 pawn break, he could have played knight b7. And the point is, when you do this, you can take the pawn. And if rook d1, rook d1, the queen will protect this. So this is possible. You can uh, also go knight c5. This is probably much better attacking the queen. And when you go queen c6, to, because we have to protect the e6 pawn as well, you have queen g4 attacking this. And if you play f5, we go back. Now by forcing f5, we are ruling out the possibility of f e5. And here, white should uh, be happy with the extra pawn. So knight b7 was probably the refutation against c5. But Duda played uh, rook b7, which, uh, like I said, it allowed knight e5. And this came as a shock for white. But he reacted well. He took queen d5. This is also perfectly fine. And after e d5, rook d7, rook d7. Rook d7, you lose the knight on e5. So he took knight into d7. And now he played knight b7. So the portion is equal at this point. Now we both have five points each and the rook and knight versus rook and knight. Now, if knight c5, he gets rook c1, right? If you take on c5, rook c1, then it will be pin. This was the trap. 
So first plug plug played, attacking the knight. And if you move the knight, then you can take this and white will retain an extra pawn. So the critical move is c6. Now the point is, if you take rook c6, rook d5, four versus four pawns, it should end in a draw. But at this point, Prague wanted to play for win, and which was a wise decision. Now he played knight b6, protecting the pawn. Now he's going to take rook c6, this is the threat. So forcing knight a5. Now the knight on a5 is not very good, but at least it keeps the advanced pass pawn defended. So now Prague came here. His idea is to come with the king, support the pawn, and then play knight c4, diverting the knight away from defending the c6 pawn. So this is this was his idea. And Duda also brought his king. And now he is already threatening knight c4. And when the knight moves, b pawn, c pawn will fall. So Duda played knight b7 which is a nice move now at this point the position is quite equal he has kept a small trap if we take the pawn then obviously this knight d check is happening so that is not possible so what Prague could have done he could have played uh, knight c4 and if rook check king here now we are threatening we are still not threatening because the check is there but at least we can uh, come knight e5 and that have to take the pawn. So this is portion is equal. And if he goes rook d1, we can again come king e6 and it will be a draw. But here Prague, he made a, a blunder, but which it was not very apparent that it is a blunder. He played king e5. Now the threat is rook into c6, and there is no more knight d8 coming with check. So this is one threat. The other threat is simply um, get the king and uh, push the pawn with the help of the king and knight. So twin threats. But unfortunately, at this point, white has a four check. And some nice traps are possible. And then knight d6 check. The point is, if we play king e6 attacking the knight, also we are threatening rook into c6, he can play knight b5. And this is hanging. Now, if you do this, this fork, this is the point. So after f4, king f5, knight d6 check, if we go king g6, threatening rook into pawn, he has this beautiful move rook c1. Now he's threatening knight b5, and then the c pawn, the a pawn will also fall, the c pawn will promote. So you could try knight c4 to block, knight into c4, rook c6. But unfortunately, finally, he gets this knight e5 discovered check. Otherwise, black is winning. Okay, so for this reason, king e5 was not the best to move played by black. But both, like I said, were in time trouble, and it is not possible to calculate all this variation in with few seconds on the board. And Duda also made a mistake by playing this check, and now Prague took the king all the way up. So now he wants to, one idea is to get the king up and push the pawn. The other idea is simply he's threatening rook into pawn. So now Duda played knight d8. And the point is, he's defending the pawn and he's threatening knight e6 fork, working the rook and the king. So Prague carefully put the rook. Now he's ready to push the pawn. Now, if the knight is going to remain here defending this pawn, then black will use the king pawn and the knight to advance the d-pawn. The knight will be too far away from the scene of action. And here, at this point, Duda's only way to save the game is to protect this pawn this way. Idea knight e6. So we have to block, preventing knight e6 to take here. And rook check on attack knight d2 and again rook c1 so this will be a draw so if we want we can play knight c4 rook d1 knight d2 and it will be a draw so this is what he should have done but after king d3 like i said it was mutual time trouble 
and let to deploy rook to e3 and after rook e3 king d2 now the pawn is too powerful and the knight is too far away he came rook e6 and his idea is to play rook to d6 for example now if you push the pawn to d4 he'll play rook d6 pawn attack and then knight to e6 rook attack and then the c d pawn will fall so if you are careless this kind of variation is possible but prag was extremely careless he asked himself why did he play rook e6 found the answer rook d6 is coming so he just uh, brought the knight to c4 before pushing the pawn so once rook behind the pass pawn is prevented he is ready to advance the pawn now the game is practically over for all the reasons but little carefulness is still welcome the point is now if you play d4 he was basically keeping a trap so we have to support and then he can do this and the position will become equal even though black still will have some winning chances so prag he carefully played here now the pawn is unstoppable so they just played a few more moves and white won the point is now he is not able to come closer because of this check if king d1 rook e1 is made and if you move the king away we can simply play king c2 and come on the pawn so the game is for all practical reasons over and duda resigned okay so the initial position was uh, this so it was given as black to play for the participants and you have to find this idea and white has to find this and then f6 and rook b1 either we have to find c5 idea or the knight e5 idea which we have seen both are fine so this was one of the training games now the other training game which i had given for groups 2 to 4 let's see that now yeah this is the one and here it is black to play now this was game was played between uh, mamadiarov versus magnus carlson at bl grandmaster tournament 2018 and at this point uh, magnus carlson as black he played uh, rook 3 c4 okay so maybe i will go one move behind yeah so this was the position so at this point magnus played rook 3 c4 and uh, it became quite difficult for him and the position is still uh, he gets good counter play but he had one interesting draw which is rook e3 sacrificing this rook completely this idea is one of the idea is to go this way attack the pawn the other idea obviously is to take the bishop the point is now after he takes now everything is coming in one diagonal right so we could go bishop to d6 attacking the rook and the g3 pawn now he has few options one he can move the rook or two he can try to push the pawn and promote it Okay, so let us see both the variations now suppose if he moves the rook we don't take the bishop or we don't take this because he is setting rook of 6 to get some connected pass pawns we first take rook g3 and when he goes king h2 because if king h4 we simply have a draw right so if white is playing for a win he has to do this and now we go rook check now again if he comes to h3 we have rook g3 check draw so he has to go to h1 and now we have rook b8 so now it is black is having an extra pawn and this pawn as of now it's not dangerous so he has to go rook to f6 we go here rook of 7 and king f4 now you can see that suddenly the black king is becoming very active and we can even consider some mating nets around the white king so black gets fantastic counter play and it is white who needs to play exactly at this point so we can see that after rook e3 rook c7 bishop d6 
rook of seven means rook g3 we are getting fine good position as black so instead of rook of seven he can try pushing e7 and we still go rook g3 check now if he goes king to h2 worst case we can go rook g8 rook g8 and then uh, when he goes here he can take this okay so this is also good enough for a draw so if you play the king to h4 you just repeat the position and make a draw okay now if you are not happy with this you can also play the rook here and when he goes here you take here now the rooks are attacked and the pawn is under attack so e8 queen is first you take rook e8 rook e8 bishop into c7 and now we are threatening king g5 and take the pawn okay so this cannot be stopped so instead what he can do for rook e8 instead of directly taking rook e8 he can play rook at 7 pushing the king back but even in this case we take and then we play bishop to e5 now he can bring the king up we go here threatening king g5 so the only move to prevent it is rook g8 now black wants to simply come up all the way and give check and take rook and king into pawn so we have to play accurately by playing h4 now if he gives check we have king h5 and if he comes king h3 we have king h5 now we can just move the bishop all the way back and forth along this diagonal and white cannot make any improvement because if the white rook leaves the g5 we can simply play king g5 king f5 okay so this was an interesting draw which uh, i was hoping the players will be able to find during the training game the move is rook e3 now let me quickly show what happened in the game magnus played uh, rook c4 which is not bad either he played bd5 and rook c5 so finally mamajarov played he is asking a question he wants to clear the sound track so rook into d7 and the point is if pawn into d7 you can take rook d5 so forcing rook into d7 now at this critical moment magnus made a blunder he played rook a5 after this it is lost and here mamajarov also made a blunder with bishop c6 but bishop c4 was very strong let's see what the point is now the bishop is under attack and if you move the bishop e7 e8 can happen or rook f7 can happen so if we just attack rook c5 put the bishop to d3 rook c3 and now you take the bishop so basically we want the rook to come to this place and now you play rook e8 now what is the point the point is we'll see now when he comes here we play rook g8 now we have to be careful about some uh, crazy stalemate ideas now what we want to do oh sorry not rook f3 rook e3 rook behind the pass pawn very important anyway we play rook g8 now we want to get the king back into the game okay so he will play rook e2 otherwise we will just get the king all the way and uh, win this pawn because the rook will be completely tied to stop e7 pawn so this rook e2 is very important and now the rook doesn't have any squares on the file he cannot push this pawn he cannot push this pawn and if he leaves the rook then the king will come out right so it looks like the rook cannot move these two pawns cannot move and if you play king h2 then rook h2 is mate so white has this one when you take now obviously he cannot take with the king because of uh, rook g2 check and he will lose the rook so he'll go king g3 now he is in some kind of a zug zone king h5 now we go rook g4 now he cannot play rook g2 king g2 because the pawn ending this pawn will win 
So it goes through key one. So when this, so we play king f3. And now we are going to play rook e4 and push the pawn. Okay, if rook f1 check, king e2 is uh, good enough for by rook e4. So this would have won the game, but it's not an easy win to find. So instead of uh, playing rook a5, allowing bishop c4 win, which is hard to find, uh, what black should have done is should have played bishop f8. Now, if you go rook f7 to attack, we will play bd6. Now we are also threatening this idea. So you can play king g2. Now calmly black white wants to get the king. Now we go rook b5. King f3. Bishop a3. Now we want to get the king out as well. And if he goes king e4 supporting this, then check. G4. The point is if e7 check and when he moves the king you can take and this question gives very good counterplay for black but as you can see these variations are not easy to find over the board and without the help of engines these are very hard to find variations with especially with very less time on the clock and uh, probably it would the rook e3 idea would have uh, ensured not so much complications and uh, ensured a safer draw for black. So these are the two positions I wanted to show today. And we will see with a couple of more positions next week, same time. So thank you everyone for attending today's session. Bye-bye.